American imperium that is taking over the world are all meant to serve one mission to pave the way for the state of Israel to wage a big war and as a consequence of that big war that Israel is going to wage the territory of the state of Israel is going to dramatically expand to encompass the biblical frontiers of Israel, of the Holy Land. Bible says, from the river of Egypt to the river Euphrates. That's not true. The Quran proves that that is false. The Holy Land does not exist. From the river of Egypt to the river Euphrates, that is false. But it's there in the Bible. They put it in. And so Israel has to wage a big war which will dramatically expand the territory of the state so that Israel will, swear, will, will, will control the Suez Canal tomorrow. And Israel will control the oil of the Gulf tomorrow. And there will be a concomitant attack on the U.S. dollar. And the U.S. dollar collapses, and when it collapses, it will bring down the whole world of paper money with it. This is our lecture on Islam and the international monetary system. When Israel wages that big war, I expect that Israel will unleash weapons of warfare we've never seen before. And at the end of it, Israel will take over from the United States as a new ruling state in the world. But Israel cannot wage that war while still there are any significant obstacles in the way. And now put on your thinking caps. Which is the most significant obstacle which still stands in the way of Israel waging a big war? Is it a man named Osama bin Laden? and his men hiding in caves in Afghanistan? Is it that blue-eyed stooge of the Yankee, a man named Saddam Hussein? Are they significant obstacles in the path of Israel? Is it Taliban in Afghanistan? Wake up! None of these are significant obstacles in the path of Israel. Israel has one major obstacle in its way that must be removed before Israel can wage that big war. And it is Pakistan's nuclear weapons capacity. And coupled with that is Iran's missile capacity. And so all the hullabaloo we're going through now all the maneuverings on the chessboard of the world are all intended to culminate with the destruction of Pakistan's nuclear capacity. That is around the corner. 
that's about to take place. Parvez Musharraf, of course, is playing a very significant role in it. <coughs> I expect that Israel will be able to wage a big war probably within the next five to ten years. But Allah knows best. When Israel wages that big war and re replaces the United States as a ruling state in the world, the first ruling state was Britain. The second ruling state was the United States. The third and the last would be this imposter, the state of Israel. You know, you're supposed to bury your dead and forget about it because she didn't get a chance to bury her father. That pain she always carried, but then she converted that pain into strength. This is something I learned after I lost her. I didn't know there was a strength in pain. I had no idea that you could, uh, um, you could use uh, the pain, the force of pain, and convert it into an energy to fight. And, and you must miss her every day? Every moment, every second. Very Okay, guys, a couple more. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. If everybody, please head out this way. Peter, if you want to walk to your right, please. Thank you. Thanks, guys. In Pakistan, meanwhile, the first apparent U.S. missile strike since, since Barack Obama became commander-in-chief. At least 17 people were killed, and the world is getting an early sample of the new administration's war on terror. Let's over to, head over to the Pentagon. Our correspondent, Barbara Starr, is standing by. What happened, Barbara? Well, Wolf, the president is now exercising his authority as commander-in-chief, and the world is watching. Do solemnly swear. Just as President Barack Obama was sworn in on Tuesday, General David Petraeus was in Pakistan pressing top officials yet again to crack down on militants. The first sign the Obama administration's not going to ease up on the hunt, two CIA missile strikes Friday killed more than a dozen people in the tribal region. There have been some 30 strikes like these over the past year. The new president is making clear the deteriorating security situation in Afghanistan and Pakistan will get more attention. This is the central front in our enduring struggle against terrorism and extremism. CNN has learned from a top U.S. official the missile attacks are authorized under a covert program which has been briefed to Mr. Obama. The reason for the program's existence? To target and kill senior al-Qaeda and Taliban leaders and keep survivors on the run. Suspects may be tracked for weeks before strikes are called in. Under George Bush, the president did not have to approve each strike beforehand. It's believed Mr. Obama, for now, has the same arrangement, according to U.S. officials. Even during the campaign, candidate Obama made clear he wouldn't hesitate to cross Pakistan's borders. If we have actionable intelligence about high-value terrorist targets and President Musharraf will not act, we will. In an interview Friday with Wolf Blitzer, Musharraf, now out of office, said Pakistan doesn't expect the U.S. strikes to stop. Well, nobody in Pakistan is comfortable with uh, strikes uh, across the border. Uh, there is no, no doubt in that. Uh, public opinion is very much against it.